There are over a hundred pyramids in Egypt, but a majority of them are in a dilapidated state. However, the three great pyramids of the Giza Plateau have best survived the test of time and received the maximum attention from tourists. The smallest of the great trio, the often ignored pyramid of Menkora, is no doubt a literal mountain of priceless historical evidence. But why is it so small compared to the other two pyramids? Was it left incomplete? Is there any other reason for its partially disrupted state? What is the story behind the great breach across its northern face? It is certainly a diamond in the rough that might not have managed to shine as brightly as its enigmatic giant neighbors, but is no less a mystery that has brought up dozens of questions. Today on Crunch, we will have a look at what archaeologists discovered inside the Pyramid of Menkora. Exploring the Pyramid of Menkora An old saying in archaeology goes, the most valuable objects for study are those that remain incomplete because the process of creation is laid bare and design intentions can be more clearly understood. In the 19th century, the craze of archaeology drew scores of wealthy explorers to Egyptian monuments, especially the mysterious pyramids. An English army officer, Colonel Richard William Howard Vyse, was one of them. Like many other explorers of his time, he was interested in the pyramids, which stemmed from strong religious beliefs. One detail of Menkora's pyramid that caught his eye was a large furrow in the north side of the building. Quite deep, but not enough to penetrate past the solid granite structure of the pyramid. He soon discovered that this wound was caused by stonecutters who had been commanded to destroy the pyramid 700 years earlier by another powerful army. In 1171, Egypt was conquered by the Ayyubid army of Saladin, who established a sultanate along the River Nile. Saladin's son, Al-Aziz, reigned after him and embarked on an ambitious plan to dismantle the pyramids. Apparently, he was persuaded that there was treasure inside, so he ordered a number of his soldiers and stonecutters to take apart the solid blocks of the pyramid. But probably they were unable to accomplish anything but inflict small scratches to the surface of the blocks. It appears that Sultan gave up after learning that it was a costly operation that had little chance of succeeding. Eventually, he did locate an entrance that took him into the interior. The burial chamber that contained the sarcophagus was found in the lower chamber of the bedrock. This basalt sarcophagus weighed three tons, and its exterior showed elaborate decorations on the stone that the Egyptians refer to as palace facade motif. Vise also spotted some Arabic graffiti on the walls, indicating they were not the first to get in there. So, if Sultan's men were unsuccessful, who else made in and stole the treasure? Interestingly, the excavators also found bones, linen wrappings, and parts of a wooden coffin within the pyramid. An inscription on the front of the coffin identified its owner as Osiris Menkora, given life forever, born of the sky, the sky goddess nut above you. Though the style of the coffin seems to date from the 26th dynasty, the radiocarbon dating of the bones pointed to the Christian period. This appears to be a reburial of Menkora, some 2,000 years after he lived and died. It is a mystery that suggests the history of the pyramids may not always be as straightforward as Egyptologists would like to believe. Vyse hoped the artifacts would be brought to the surface and exhibited in the British Museum once restored. And so after over 4,300 years in security, the pharaoh's sarcophagus was pulled out of the pyramid at the cost of considerable effort. Although this pyramid had been explored in the 1830s, the pyramid temple at its base was in only mediocre condition and left ignored. It was excavators working under the direction of George Reisner, head of the Joint Harvard University Museum of Fine Arts Boston and Expedition to Egypt, who uncovered an astonishing collection of statuary in the Valley Temple connected to the Pyramid of Menkora on January 10, 1910. In the southwest corner of the structure, the team discovered a magnificent cache of statuary carved in a smooth-grained dark stone called Greywack. There were several triad statues, each depicting three figures, the king, the fundamentally important goddess Hathor, and a personification of a nom, which was a geographical designation similar to the modern concept of a region, district, or county. 
Hathor was worshipped in the period temple complexes along with the sun god Ra and the god Horus, who were represented by the living king. They recovered some four complete triads, one incomplete and at least one other in a fragmentary condition. The team also revealed an incredible dyad statue of Menkora and a queen, which is exquisitely unique. But it seems like the dyad was never finished, the area around the lower legs had not received a final polish, and there was no inscription. Despite this incomplete state, the image was erected in the temple and was brightly painted. If observed closely, traces of red around the king's ears and mouth and yellow on the queen's face can be noticed. Today, these Old Kingdom royal sculptures, discovered by Reisner, sit in the Museum of Fine Arts, Boston. But what about the cavalier in disguise, Colonel Weiss, who stepped forward to safeguard the pieces of antiquity found in the burial chamber? The Lost Treasures of Menkora Weiss claimed that he wanted to save the sarcophagus from further destruction. Menkora's mummy was gone and the sarcophagus was damaged by graffiti. So, Mancora's sarcophagus was put on the English merchant ship Beatrice, which set sail from Alexandria in September of 1838. It arrived on the island of Malta and was to sail to Liverpool, England. Once there, it would be sent to England's British Museum in London. However, that never happened. On October 13th, Beatrice encountered a storm and the ship sank somewhere in the Mediterranean Sea. Was it the curse of the mummy? The Beatrice is perhaps the most beguiling, unresolved case of a shipwreck containing a treasure much older than the date of the sinking. The whereabouts of the Beatrice have bedeviled archaeologists for decades. The exact spot where Beatrice sank is unknown, and that makes finding the wreck difficult. Even the surviving members of the crew were unable to give the exact location. In 2008, Egyptian authorities planned to search for the wreck. Robert Ballard, the man famous for discovering the sunken RMS Titanic, was called to lead the search. However, political trouble in the country cut the search short. There was also cause for concern regarding the ownership of the sarcophagus, if it would have been recovered. It's an Egyptian artifact that was aboard a British ship that sank in Spanish waters. Luckily, the Beatrice wasn't the only ship carrying artifacts. Some artifacts, including the lid from the sarcophagus, were sent on a separate ship that safely arrived at its destination. The sarcophagus may be lost at the bottom of the sea, but there's a good chance that it's well preserved. Mancora's sarcophagus was made of basalt, which is less vulnerable to seawater than other materials, such as limestone. Perhaps one day it will be located and recovered from the waters of the Mediterranean. It would be worth tens of thousands of dollars in US currency today. A likely debate would then ensue over who had the right to possess this piece of history. With any luck, it will return to perhaps where it was always meant to be, in Menkora's Pyramid in Giza. Leave us a take on this in the comments below. Thanks for watching Crunch. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more such content.